Hey guys, before uh, we get started with the show this week, want to send a shout out to our friend in the mainstream media, Matt Carlins. He's uh, suffering from a kidney stone. Is that correct? I assume it's liver enzymes. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay, we're unclear on what bad is happening. We just know something bad is happening, <laughs> and George he's bought a DVD. Moved on George to WWE. Sorry, he's moved he on to w- from WWE delayed. Supercard. He's on Star Trek Trexel- Trexels. Either way, Matt Carlin's wherever the heck is wrong with you. <laughs> he has diverticulitis, and he's eventually going to beat John Cena. I'm hoping it's not that thing. <laughs> mostly, but either way, from us at the Mayhem Show. Get well soon. Get well, Get well soon, well. Carlin. Carlin. Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show number 434. This is Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitters here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk wrestling with my buddies. With my buddies here, my pals, like Papa Lunchbox, DJ Lunchbox, also from the area. What's up, guys? Uh, I am on fire this evening. I've already recorded one and a half podcasts, and then I'm going to do this one, then I'm going to do the other half. And uh, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. I'm drinking coffee out of a mason jar. Let's do this. You have your own podcast night going on, don't you? It's exhausting. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Welcome to my world, you sir. so much earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Mad Mike from Poughkeepsie, New York. Woohoo! I'm on my second podcast of the day. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> and also with us, a new, new guest with us to talk wrestling. He's from headfloxforbreakfast.com. We'll talk to him about that here in a moment. But uh, Trevor, oh, I didn't catch a last name. Pronounce the Osh? Osh? Oz. Oz. Like I, the Wizard of. Thank you. In the middle. I, that's the way I wanted it to go. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, how you doing? I don't even know where you're coming from. Great. Where are you coming from? I'm happy to be here. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, seem like an interesting crew of folks. Yes, uh, if you have not, uh, this may be the week for you guys to subscribe to the Patreon or the uh, or the, the the app on 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 iTunes uh, for WMS Gold because there was a debut of Turkey Cast apparently. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I, there's a little preview right there under under their breath. Uh, so go check that out and please support the show that way. Of course, as you heard at the top of the show. Uh, thanks a lot to our. Uh, Intro by Basic Sickness. You can check out more of his stuff at basicsickness.com. Uh, a lot of free music, music videos, all kinds of stuff uh, going on there. A big supporter. Uh, you can also check us out, this and all the rest of the stuff we do as far as wrestling goes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Uh, you can check out the after show. You can check out the Indie Mayhem Show, uh, some columns uh, every once in a while. And you can also check out this show on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, video and audio formats. Uh, just subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And that helps us get discovered by more people, get the reviews, uh, star it, share it with your friends, get us out there, help spread the mayhem nation he can also drop us a line at that email address at good times, good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or drop to the ha- the hotline at 412-206 wms0 um and of course you can join us here every tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com about 9 p.m eastern time so you don't miss all that extra stuff that happens um every every tuesday uh and you know that's not a that's not a who put that there what is this doing here we thank our awesome intern mike allen at mike allen pr at the end of the show and now i'm confused Thanks a lot. Um, Also, uh, thanks to our Patreon supporters. You can support us as well at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and get that gold. Of course, our friends at the wrestling revolution.com. And of course, Bo diggity. Woo. 
for joining us. So let's, uh, well, we don't really have any fan mail. What happened? Everybody just like took a nap after SummerSlam explosion last week, it seems. I uh, think everyone died in the room, Sork. Everybody died in the room. I think everybody turned off wrestling and gave up after last night's promo. But we'll talk about that uh, as well. We we started the conversation last night on the wrap-up. But uh, first, let's talk with our, our guest this, this week uh, he, uh, from Headlocks for Breakfast. Dot com. Trevor, tell us, what are you guys doing over there? Uh, Headlocks for Breakfast, uh, we're basically just trying to make something that's fun. We want to bring fun back to wrestling. We want to do fun articles, uh, highlight stuff that we think is just cool out there in the wrestling world. Uh, stuff like your show. Uh, we, you know, we like to take wrestling fans. I mean, I did an interview with Ron Funches, for example, because nice. he's a wrestling fan. And he's an awesome guy. And, I mean, he just happens to be a comedian, too. Um, that's the kind of stuff that we want to do. And we want to go to wrestling shows and kind of highlight the good things, you know, maybe criticize a little bit, but still stay on the positive side of things. So it sounds like you're you're kind of battling. And I read a couple of things on your site, and I, that's exactly why I invited you guys on. Um, it, it seems like you're the, you know, anti dirt sheet, I, the IWC Internet Wrestling Community uh, attitude. From the Absolutely. I, the the thing going on in wrestling right now all the time is you see so much negative stuff on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, everywhere about wrestling. And every, wrestling fans can just be so negative sometimes. And that's what we don't want to be. We want to be a positive force and have fun with wrestling and highlight what's fun about wrestling. Because honestly, the reason we're all fans is because wrestling's awesome and wrestling's fun. And we just want to highlight that. Awesome, awesome. How long have you guys been doing the site? Any anything interesting? Any any anything from a fan base or anything in particular that you've discovered uh, uh, looking out for these awesome things? Well, we're we're, we're still very very new. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just launched in June. Uh, it was actually uh, it, it used to be a blog for our editor in chief, Marcus Stevenson. Uh, he's actually a former community manager for WWE Games as well as Madden Sports. Um, he works with the Columbus Blue Jackets now on social media. So uh, he just wanted to bring uh, his blog back in a, in a bigger way and make it a website and something that everybody can interact with. Uh, but we, we're still kind of like feeling stuff out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, seeing what people like, what people like to interact with, and just having fun with it. Nice, nice. Uh, well, uh, thanks for coming on the show. You know, and uh, uh, we'll we'll get into some conversation here. Uh, of course, I can't wait to to see what you think. Um, so awesome! Like I said, uh, it was a little weird this week. No fan mail, but uh, I think everybody mostly is talking about uh, Raw last night. Really, it's kind of been a light week. Uh, we'll get into a little bit of Raw, a little bit of a uh, WWE Network. Of course, I think most of us have caught wind of the new Monday Night Wars. Uh, uh, show that's going on there and and have some opinions on some of the stuff uh, that they're bringing from the back catalog. Uh, but first of all, like we mentioned, uh, uh, Bellas. Oh my God, Bellas. <laughs> <laughs> um, we talked about this a little bit. What's that? What's that, LB? That was unpleasant. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, so, I mean, thankfully, we've turned around from this uh, situation uh, uh, with the... the, the uh, they're a physical therapist and we just kind of forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so yeah, who, I mentioned that last night. Yeah. They just, they just immediately just dropped it. They put it out there and every single person was like, this is garbage and we don't want to watch it. And they're like, okay, we're done. Let's turn a bell a heel. <laughs> Which I think was the plan to all along. Um, but it, it was kind of weird that they just, well, well Daniel Bryan himself came out and said, this is mm-hmm. stupid. Mm-hmm. Like before they even got to SummerSlam. It almost seems like they did the blow off segment a week before the blow off show to Raw. Like the contract signing thing should have been the blow off segment. Yeah. Like they were really stretching to fill that week. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't even really need to do anything. Like they just needed to show a package of what had previously happened. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. The the whole well, when they did the whole personal trainer thing, it was just it was their jumping the shark moment. That storyline was so good, and especially for a Bella to be in a good storyline is surprising. It was so good before then, and then at that point, it was just like, really, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder um, I, this, this entire time, and unfortunately, I feel like I'm tainted by this because every time I see something with the, especially the Bellas, I think, how is this going to turn into an episode of Total Divas? Yeah, I was thinking that too. 
And, and by the way, like, I don't know if you guys have noticed on WWE Network, there's a new disclaimer that's been popping up about how these are fictitious characters and opinions don't, you know, fit the corporate views, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's before Total Divas, the reality show. <laughs> and I know what I know and expect from reality shows, but reality shows are supposed to be real still, right? No. No? Uh, no? Are we past that? I, I think we are. Have we had the sports entertainment moment for reality shows as, as a culture? Yeah. Yeah. So right. I think as soon as we got into real world season 1100, yeah. it was past the point of actually being real people. It was over that. I mean, people don't expect reality shows to be real. People double shouldn't expect a reality show uh, made by a wrestling company to be real. Mm-hmm. It definitely gets weird when they're reacting to certain matches. Mm-hmm. So, um, and uh, I mean, I, I hate to ahead. say Total Divas is a guilty pleasure. <laughs> um, I do watch it, but um, I, I, I live tweet it for the Mayhem show. <laughs> well, I mean, at least you're doing it. Like, I just watched it because I don't know. For some reason, I enjoy it. I, maybe I just like train wrecks. I, I mean, I don't know. Oh, I love train wrecks. I watch TNA. You know what? Lately, though, lately, though, TNA has been pretty good. Mm. I mean, <laughs> the past couple of weeks have not been good. Well, but the stuff they have coming up is pretty good because I was at one of the tapings, so I kind of know what's coming. I'm excited for it. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, going back again, digging into Raw last night. So let's stay on the ladies for the moment. Uh, Paige and AJ Lee um, have been Man. fantastic. They can do no wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the sexiest feud ever. I. It's, let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Like every match they have is fantastic. Um. The feud is interesting, you know what I mean? It's not, you know, shitty and degrading to them. It's it's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like they're both trying to play the same kind of mind games. And last month, Paige had the advantage. Now that Paige has the title, AJ has the advantage because she has less to lose. So it it's really kind of an interesting dynamic because they're both similar characters. And, like, they're both completely away from anything related to Total Divas. So let's keep that going, that they don't interact with any of the Total Divas except to take distraction losses. I was going to say, plus plus we don't have to watch Cameron, who is the worst person ever. Uh, even even on Total Divas, she's completely unlikable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's always a plus. And I'd like to thank Eve Marie for getting married at this point in time so we don't have to see her on TV right now, too. That's great. No, she's just destroying me in supercars every chance she can get. Oh, don't even get me started on that bullshit. I got destroyed by a super rare Nikki Bella three times today. How does that even happen? <laughs> you know, you know, I was watching um uh again with the network. You know, I know Nitro and Raw's coming up here. Uh they're gonna add like a thousand hours of that in the coming weeks. Um so I need to get through the rest of Saturday Night's main event. You know, that's the first thing where I'm like, I wanna watch the entire thing. Right. Uh, because there's a lot of memories in there. I did watch a lot of these when they originally came out. Uh, and I was I was bl- cursed and then blessed with a virtual match. <laughs> as you know, as Million Dollar Man's Virgil, not the later free Virgil. Also, the slave talk. <laughs> Virgil who, Freeman. Who yeah, was he? Exactly. Who, did he who, who did he face? Uh, I believe Hercules. Oh, the mighty Hercules. The mighty Hercules, who apparently Bobby Heenan had sold to the Million Dollar Man, and then Hercules said, I'm no slave. Well, yeah, because Hercules had the big chain. <sighs> yes. He broke them like Spartacus. And and the, the slave talk has been really interesting in this in these promos, <laughs> and kind of unsettling at the same time. Which is like... It, it, like him saying, I'm no slave. Million Dollar Man says, yes, you're a slave. And then there's Virgil. <laughs> All right. So funny story about Million Dollar Man Virgil. When I was in like third or fourth grade was when I started to get into wrestling. And we were also learning about U.S. history. And I learned the term indentured servant. <laughs> I always assumed that's what Virgil was. And he only had to be there with him for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> I assume like at some point. 
Ted DiBiase would be like, okay, you've served your time and earned your freedom. Be gone with you, Virgil. <laughs> Wow. Instead, they fought over the the million dollar belt. Also, I think I saw the debut of the million dollar belt. Hmm. Nice. So it looks a lot better than it did on Virgil's table a few weeks ago. <laughs> oh, Virgil, <laughs> Virgil. Um. Anyways, back to back to last night. Um. I I know we had a big uh to do about the ending of last night. Uh, uh. John Cena has been so interesting going into SummerSlam, of course, and then we just had to have Super Cena at the at the uh at the hands of the Wyatts. Unfortunately, uh. uh anybody else feel a little odd by that, or just like we're back to business as usual? And why Wyatts? Why? It's it's stupid. It's just stupid. I mean, we have Bray Wyatt coming off the heels of Jericho mm-hmm. and facing Jericho. night Rybacksel would have been perfect for this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like have John Cena versus Ryback, Axel interferes, then John Cena versus Rybacksel in a handicap match. I feel like them- they needed somebody credible though. They need somebody that like it'll be an interesting thing to keep us to keep us going until the end of Raw. But like, okay, Bray Wyatt, he's been doing interesting stuff. Uh but we get there and we get him mimicking John Cena in the last match. You know? Um and then the random and I understand the the Mark Henry Big Show sets up SmackDown in their tag match that they announced earlier in the night. But still, it, it just felt very bland in the long run. I know they can't all be well, winners, but... Bringing, bringing in um, Big Show and Mark Henry, that I think that was their way of like protecting uh, the Wyatts. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't actually lose the match. It just all kind of fell apart. You know what I mean? So Cena didn't necessarily win. Wyatts didn't necessarily lose. I don't understand why everybody is so set, upset about this. I really don't get it. People are pissed, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, it made the Wyatts look bad, and I agree that it would, they would have been better served putting Cena up against somebody else. But the point isn't that he's being super Cena. The point is that he's being crazy and brutal in the way he's showing that he's willing to do that. Um and in this next match with Brock Lesnar. Yeah, it made the Wyatts look bad, but it I mean, it served a purpose. But he wasn't really being crazy and or brutal. He was just dominating. Like he wasn't like grabbing a steel chair and he was dominating the, the same he was going. dominating the same way that Brock was dominating at SummerSlam. It, in the in the, the, the first point. part in the first part of Bray Wyatt, I agree. But then when it went to the handy when it went to the six man match, they almost lost that completely. Well yeah, the, when it went to the six man match it all kind of Yeah, like went to Rusev pot. Rusev was doing what John Cena should have been doing because he beat Jack Swagger just by repeatedly stomping him in the head. Like John Cena should have been doing something like that and not to where Bray Wyatt like quit or anything like that, but just could not get up. Mm -hmm. Like you needed something like that where Cena was just being overly aggressive, probably to the point where he even gets himself DQ'd. That's true. But imagine how badly that, people would have shit their pants then they would have been like they made the Wyatt they made Bray Wyatt look like a piece of shit if if John Cena beat on him until he literally could not get back up it would be 10 times worse than the way it actually happened but we'll have told a better story at least I agree last, with it told night, a better story but last night didn't tell a story it just it was just John Cena right before Wrestlemania when he fought Bray Wyatt mm-hmm. last night told the first part of a story, everything else that the, and everything else was to cover everyone's asses. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think it really accomplished what they were trying to. Well, let's take a moment. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, somebody who's been supporting the show and then we'll uh, take a look at uh, our friend of the show. Jen Carlin's uh, has been uh, going without wrestling since Dean Ambrose isn't going to be around for a month, as we've discussed earlier on the show. Uh, so we're, we're going to take a look at her Twitter feed and see how she's doing. Um, I saw something she's about... She's been sending me pictures, Sorg. What's that? 
She's been sending me pictures of topless Dean Ambrose. Oh no, is that that's how she's I, coping? I, I told her, I'm like, I don't care if you do this, but at least mix it up with a diva every now and then. <laughs> and then she sends me a picture of Eva Marie. Oh no. And I said, Really? All right, we'll touch base with that in a moment. But again, in the meantime, uh, if you come into the Pittsburgh area, please check out our friends that support this show, uh, Slice on Broadway. They're uh, down here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in the Beachview area. Also, a new location over in, that's not right, there it is, over in Carnegie, PA. If you're going out by the airport, you see that exit drop by down to the main street. And uh, it's some damn good pizza, as our, our friend from New York here can attest. It's damn good pizza. <laughs> Thanks. I was told earlier, just because he's New York doesn't make he's means he's a, he's an expert. And I say no. Um, a, I'm New York. I'm from New York. Yes. Two, I'm also overweight, so I know. <laughs> he's got a point. All right, there you go. If I was skinny, I understand that, but trust me, I've sampled many a pizza joint. Mm-hmm. This is he why- looks like a guy I trust with a pizza recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. So go check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Like I was mentioning, uh, uh, she's coping. She's coping with this no Dean Ambrose for a month. Uh, if I can bring up the one tweet she had here. Uh, day five, I'm annoyed. What shall I do tonight since I'm not watching Raw? Apparently send Mad Mike some pictures. Um, on day four, she was playing with some magic sand. That she stole from her kids. Magic Sand Podcast. <laughs> that could be an that could be a new one. There you go. And there's her playing with her magic sand for you guys on video. Um, she's not coping very well. Uh, <laughs> did, did she make a magic sand castle in the form of Dean Ambrose? That's a good question. That's a very good question. I hope she answers that when she listens to this. She didn't swear off the podcast, right? I. She better not have sworn off the podcast. Better not be part of it. She knows we're going to talk about Dean Ambrose on here. So well, I will text her immediately to find out if the Wrestling Mayhem show is part of her ban on wrestling. As much as I mean, watching that last night, I mean, like I I saw tweets. We were saying in the hangout, everybody wanted him to jump out of that picture, right? Yes, I I, I was saying in the hangout. I hope I wish that there was some way he could actually sneak up into the ring. And sneak right behind the picture where his legs were the tripod. <laughs> if only there weren't 15,000 people watching in an arena, this would work out really well. Well, I mean, it's not like people haven't snuck up on others before in wrestling. It's true. It used to happen all the time. Like Even TNA can pull it off when they had Abyss, of all people, sneak up on Mr. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Or Anderson, or whatever the hell he calls himself there. It can be done. Certainly, certainly. Um, hey, I, uh, what did you guys think of that last night? Of course, we're not supposed to see him for a month. I feel like it's early for Dean Ambrose to be in a movie role. But then again, they did do TV, Ted DiBiase Jr. like within a year of him being there, right? Yeah, they really and they, and they did Sin Cara in the Scooby Doo movie. Technically, yes. They Technically, really yes. want Sin Cara to be a thing. Yep. They did everybody in the Scooby Doo movie though. And it worked. They were everyone is fantastic in that movie. Everyone should go watch it immediately. Yes. I don't I don't know. I don't think it's too early for Dean Ambrose. He's one of the better like speakers they have. Plus Brodus Clay was in one of their movies. <laughs> yes, he was. I mean the bar is pretty low. And we don't know if this is like maybe he's in one of those Randy Orton uh oh, what was that movie he was in where he was like just what I am, or oh, oh, I, yeah, I I'll am. go to the papers if I Maybe have. Maybe it's to. one of those roles. We don't know yet, really. Like, is he a lead role in this? Has that been the word? Lockdown is the movie I know. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. The movie's called Lockdown. Yeah. Does it involve six sides of steel? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the movie was called Lockdown. That's amazing. It do- does a cage get lowered in the movie? <laughs> And does that cage have a guitar strap to it? I need to know these things. I'm looking it up now. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, but uh, well, the, the rumor is he's going to return at uh, Night of Champions. That would hmm. probably be enough. It's actually a really, it's a later month pay-per-view, which 
I was surprised how much time we had in between them. I and like that. Uh, it was a nice little surprise that uh, that uh, Roman Reigns came out. I figured he was on to uh, bigger and better things, but it's good. Okay, I got you. I got you here, Mike. Uh, this is for you. Wait, find your okay. video. There you are. Oh. Uh, Lockdown follows a police officer who finds himself trapped inside his own precinct and hunted after crooked cops stop at nothing to recover incriminating el- evidence of illegal activities against those closest to him. Is that kind of pre- assault on precinct 13? I'm pretty like, sure that is. sounds like that, yeah. Like, hmm. and of course, we got Leprechaun er- Origins coming out this month, too. Um, I'm super excited for Cena Weevil, too. <laughs> really? I, I'm actually. Very actively excited for it. I'm gonna go see it in theaters if I can. Oh, if that's no. coming out to theaters, you can, if you can find one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, and Sorg, if I do see it in theaters, I will be talking about it on two podcasts <laughs> on Supertron <laughs> Media. Uh, the movie films, I, I, I don't know what they're doing. You know, they're definitely not aiming to have blockbusters. Mm-hmm. They're just making money. Yeah, yeah, and I, they're making blockbuster actors. First The Rock, now Batista. That, that's true, but the, they didn't really make Batista. It's not like WWE Films has a credit on half of those films. Uh, well, they they did originally with The Rock. I think the first like three or four films they had like a Vince McMahon or WWE Studios co brand on them. Uh, so we 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 have word from Jen Carlin. Oh no! I I asked her if the Mayhem Show was part of her band. She said maybe she can talk about it. It may help her heal. <laughs> So I think we should do um, maybe next week a therapy session for Jen Carlin's. Ooh, or if she's available Ambrose. later in the show, maybe we can get that in there. So, um, hey, guys, we heard from, uh, well, we, uh, the Internet heard from friend of the show, uh, not Devin Devinson, unfortunately. Uh, Elias Sampson, uh, as we know him, formerly, <laughs> formerly Logan Schuler that we knew here with the Hello. IWC, the International Wrestling Cartel. But he did release a YouTube video this week um, of him in the training facility at WWE uh, talking about he's the first one there. He's the last one there. He, he's the first one in. He's the last one out. And uh, he's looking to pop up very soon. Uh, there's actually he's not the only one. Another guy that we've followed on the show before here locally, Sammy, Sammy Callahan, who's there as Solomon Crow. He's been also tweeting about wanting to pop up real soon. So we might get we, I, I'm guessing we're going to get a flux of new talent that's going to show up here after takedown. Uh, which is their next live event on uh, September 11th, actually, in a few weeks. Yes. Um, so, uh, And also, has anybody seen Callisto? Holy crap. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I was on an elliptical watching that match, and I almost fell. Do you know how hard it is to fall on an elliptical, Sorg? It's very yes. difficult. Yes. Yes, I think <laughs> I, I, I had an elliptical accident once. Um for those that maybe not watching the network, maybe not watching NXT, um, they're in a tag match. Uh, him and Sin Cara. Okay, at least it's a good Sin Cara, right? Um, and I love that Lucha is a chant in the NXT arena, Lucha, by the way. Lucha, 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 Lucha. And uh, uh, they're taking on Adam Rose and, and, and I almost call him El Generico. Sami Zayn. Sammy Zayn. Uh, and he he comes off of a, a, a Irish whip or a flip or something and just does this headstand back flip something or other that I can't really define. I he had to reverse re- his momentum in a handstand to a back flip head scissors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was if a great. You can video- follow what I just said. Congratulations, you're a wrestling fan. Yeah, work, work that out. In I'm your not head. even sure it's right. <laughs> there was actually a video. I don't know if it was shared on the board of uh, him taking on somebody in I believe PWG. Uh, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, where it, it was, was uh, he was taking on Ricochet, Eamon Ricochet set, that throws through the hangouts. Last oh, night. that's right. Yeah, look up this one. Samurai Del Sol was what he was known as uh, previously against Ricochet. Uh, incredible two minutes. Um, I know one of the one of the uh, conversations when it comes to these flippy high spot wrestlers is how they don't sell anything. If you watch that, there's no hits. It's all it's all back and forth. Um, but just a uh, uh, acrobatic spectacle, you know. So, uh, Trevor, are you are you familiar with Samurai Del Sol from before? Have you been watching Callisto and NXT? Uh, I've been watching Callisto and NXT. Uh, I knew of Samurai uh, mm-hmm. Del Sol, um, but I honestly hadn't seen a lot of a lot of what he did before uh, prior to NXT. Yeah, we were fortunate. I think we had him maybe two times up here in IWC. 
Uh, I know once for Super Indian, and I think something else. Uh, so, but I definitely didn't see as much as like say that Ricochet match. You know, there's stuff that's still still surprising me with that. So, um, awesome. Let's see. Um, also, hey, shout outs to our friend in the mainstream media and friend of the show. Uh, if you're local in Pittsburgh, you may have caught that uh, DJ Z Zima Ion from <laughs> TNA. There you go. There was. Uh, was on uh, KDKA channel two. You can check that out at uh, uh, oh geez, what's our website? It's like pittsburgh.cbslocal.com. We have it in our uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show group as well. Of course, him returning this past weekend at IWC as well. He's, he came up in the area. Uh, actually, went to the wrestling school at the uh, IWC. I think it was the Steel City Wrestling Academy back then. Um, so a great piece by that again, hooked up by our friend, Matt Carlins. Uh, so go check that out. Also, it's funny. You did that, Mike, the blah, 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 blah. Uh, he took on Dalton, Dalton castle. Mm-hmm. So we had people mouth air horning and nice. doing the car, the peacock car, uh, okay. back and forth in the, in the, uh, crowd. Uh, it was, it was, uh, an interesting experience. That's fantastic. <laughs> I, I actually, um, got to see, uh, Zima. At the TNA tapings, take on Loki. Yes. So, holy crap, that was fun. <laughs> I was I the know. only one that was a fan of DJ Z, though. I have to ask, because, I mean, like, I remember Loki as Loki, you know, and then and then into the, uh, 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 what was he, Caval? Uh, Caval, and then Senshi, Senshi, now Loki. Like, again. is he Loki? He's Loki. Like, this is like... Like if I put out an old IWC match of low key, this is the same low key as oh, far yeah. as the match they put down. Oh yeah, TNA made very clear to point out that yes, this is the same guy that wrestled the first X Division match for us. Oh jeez. Yeah, he's still in the X Division. So <laughs> great way to show that guys progress. In TNA. Well, it's not like guys are going to get taller. <laughs> so what? Eric Young was their world champion. Well, yeah. It was Austin Aries. Yeah, but even like even like uh, Eric Young is kind of a bulky guy. Maybe in the shoulders, but he he's not tall. I'm taller than he's him. Not so X Division-y, I I thought. All right. Anyways, um, I, I, well, actually, I, I'm going to save this this one spot for Riz later. Something about Kali. Um, uh, did you guys see? There's another one legged wrestler out there with TNA. I've seen him wrestle. Yes. Um, it's it's weird. It's very because he wrestles with an actual artificial leg on. It's not like uh, okay. Zach Allen. Yeah. Where he had the prosthetic. Um, he was pretty good. So he and he's um he looks like he's a bigger guy too. He was in, he was in the military. Yeah. Which I think is where he lost his leg. Mm-hmm. But he he's jacked. He's a jacked dude. Like um. I believe he fought. I want to say well, Kenny actually, King at the taping I was at, mm-hmm. and it was it was an interesting match. Like someone, because we were in the New York City crowd and they can be full of assholes, someone screamed "Work the leg!" So <laughs> that was fun. But uh, yeah, it was it was an interesting match. Like I don't know how much the guy can do. Mm-hmm. You know, given given a longer match, I don't know what his stamina is like. With because I mean, you could tell he like he was lifting Kenny King up like a rag doll, pretty much. But and it was definitely it's de- it's a different experience than watching Zach Allen wrestle. Mm-hmm. I'll say that. Well, it, it, interesting you mentioned it, because that's how it came across uh, uh, my feed. Actually, Zach Allen did a post on his blog over at Zach Dylan. Uh, ZachGowan.com, um, talking about the one-legged wrestler in, in TNA and 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 talking about the comparisons and, and stuff. Uh, very positive piece, really good, it, and uh, kind of introduced me to what was going on with that. Um, and definitely interesting to see a different concept on this because you know Zach wrestles a the leg is off. He's more of a flippy guy. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the things when we we're doing the documentary was you know everybody's saying well how do we do and I like people would like not thinking when they go into a match with them would try to Irish whip him. Yeah. You know, that doesn't work, you know, because he doesn't have the other leg. So he's going to what, hop across the ring. How is he going to make that believable? Right. So there's a different, you know, kind of a different style match that happens whenever he's in there. I did see him wrestle with a robot, though, in a six man tag a couple weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a whole uh, that other. That didn't happen, Sorg. You were on mushrooms. No, I think it... I keep trying to tell you. 
Um, I'm I, saying... I assume anything that happens at the gathering of the Juggalos actually happens at the gathering of the Juggalos. <laughs> yeah, that's the only, it's the only <laughs> place where a sentence like that makes sense, right? Yeah. I, I didn't say it made sense. <laughs> I just assume it, it just happened. happened. It's just accurate. It's, it's <laughs> like if you, if, you, if you just threw a bunch of magnets in there, they will work, but no one knows how the fuck they work. Oh, jeez. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Sorg. The Listen, only, the people besides, that wrote the song... Besides the oddities, it's the only thing I know of the Juggalos. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which you can't even really experience. Oddities, Magnets, and Fago. That's the only thing I know. Those are my go-to references, and I didn't want to bring up Golga. <laughs> so that's, but you did anyway. Yeah, see what I did there? See, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just, now I'm just going to be dreaming of Golga matches mm-hmm. all night long. Oh no! Well, you can dream of them for nine nine nine. Speaking, of, was it Golga? Golga was John Tenna, right? Yeah. yeah. There was um, again, oddball thing. I watched the Monday Night War, and they showed like earthquake making stakes on primetime wrestling. Oh yeah, well those were stakes out of uh, Damien. Oh no! Or, or out, out of one of Jake Roberts' snakes, I believe. Or, no, no, it wasn't snakes. It's Quake Burgers. Quake Burgers. Quake Burgers. Well, he he was trying to raise the stakes. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, on that bad bad joke. I think we need to take a break, break and regroup. Um, You're fitting in just fine, Trevor. Yes, you are. <laughs> just yes, you are. fine. Oh boy. Um. So <laughs> we broke sword. We're broken, yes. guys. We sell stuff around here somehow. I don't know. Uh, over at Sorgatron Pro Media. Tees. What? Pro Wrestling Tees. Pro... No, no, not that one. Not that one. Oh, that's, God that's damn later. It. That's later. Uh, Pro, uh, SorgatronMedia.com slash stores. Somehow these people are here, are capable of producing professional wrestling uh, with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, digital downloads by the Vicious Outcast Wrestling, and Prime Wrestling with more on the way. We actually got some special stuff coming on this week. We have AJ Styles, The Missing Matches. Hey, if you want to know how bad TNA really was, wait till you hear from the horse's mouth with AJ Styles. Find out why Clara Lynch was as bad as it was. Find out why he thinks the X Division doesn't work. Um, find out what he really thinks about kind of being Ric Flair for a little bit. Uh, it's a two-disc set. It's a great, probably about a 40, 45-minute interview interspersed with some great matches that you have not seen from places like IWC, IPW, uh, Remix Pro Wrestling, and a few other places. Uh, two discs, about four and a half hours. Took me forever to render. It's going to be available tomorrow on DVD and digital download. Uh, so go check that out. Wednesday of this week, by the way. Um, and you can also check out coming soon on there. It was available this past weekend at, at the IWC shows. Uh, Prime Cuts with Matt Cross, M Dog himself. Another two disc set, about four hours. Um, all of his best matches from Prime Wrestling, the now defunct Prime Wrestling, but fantastic stuff with Johnny Gargano, um, uh, Marion Fo- Marion Fontaine, Josh Prohibition, uh, great lineup there, uh, Matthew Justice, uh, another uh, WWE uh, developmental talent. Uh, so go check those out. In the meantime, we're going to give you a look uh, for you guys on video to RWA Aggression 6 featuring uh, Matt Hardy, of course, coming into town for that. Uh, that and Road to Aggression are available now in digital download and DVD at sorgatronmedia.com slash store under the RWA section. All that and much more. On, uh, sign up for the newsletter. Free downloads right now. You get IWC Super India 1 as a free download if you're new to the Sorgatron Media newsletter. Uh, you can find those on the side there at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, so we'll be right back with Remember When.
Welcome back. And again, check out any of that stuff over at SorgatronMedia.com slash store. Now is for one of my favorite parts of the show. Uh, remember when? Remember when? Remember when? Remember when? You're all gonna remember when? Cause we're talking about sibling rivalries. Remember when? <laughs> All right, this week on Remember Just When, as was spoiled in the song, apparently. I didn't know we did that. Um, yeah. Last night, we talked about a little bit uh, of uh, uh, the Bella Twin sibling rivalries, twin rivalries. Uh, so remember when this week, I think we might have too many people to do this. Cause I don't think, are there a lot of these in the mm, long run? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Of course, okay. they don't have to be real siblings. Cool. Oh. Uh-huh. That opens it up. That definitely yeah. opens it up. So remember when this week is sibling rivalries in wrestling. Mike, you came up with this. Why don't you hit the first one? All right. And I'm probably going to steal at least two of yours. My, there was a war in my household around 1994. Oh, no. Yeah. 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 Sorry, guys. Um, My sister was a big Bret Hart fan, (laughs) but I hated Bret Hart. And I loved me some Owen Hart. So when Owen Hart at the 1994 Royal Rumble kicked the leg of his brother Brett during their tag title match with the Quebecers, uh, that was probably my first markout moment. And the Brett-Owen rivalry was fantastic. Owen actually beat Brett at WrestleMania, which was great. And then Brett became Brett again, which sucked. But, you know. Whatever. Owen was still better. <laughs> awesome. Uh, you know, I saw an early uh, Blue Blazer match on the Blue Blazer. Oh, yeah. Was bad. yeah. He was, I should be ashamed of what I was about to just say. Don't uh, say it. Don't do it, Wheels. Don't, don't do it. You don't know what do I'm going to do, don't, don't you? I don't, don't say something racist. Do I'm, not I'm sure Owen it's going to be horrible, racist. whatever it is. I'm just going to say that Owen was a falling star. Oh, no. oh, um, now I'm depressed. Bobby, bring us back Damn with your it. with your remember one, please. I definitely need some wild turkey now. Oh. <laughs> wild turkey. Listen to gold for that reference. <laughs> uh, let's see. Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. Um, I got one. Um, wh- this this brotherly feud involved uh, somebody getting their house burned down. <laughs> What? Uh, Matt and Jeff Hardy. Oh, oh no! <laughs> Jimmy, Bobby. Um, yeah, and running somebody off the road, and yeah. Oh so, and so that one loaded by Pyro. Yeah, that one was. Yeah, 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 and he got blown up by Pyro, and it was all it was all Matt's fault. <laughs> Damn you, Matt Hardy. All right. Anybody else got one? Wow. Uh, <laughs> if you're recovered and not saying something crazy. Uh, wheels. <laughs> Just because I say it once doesn't mean I'm going to be that crazy again. I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here, I'm going to bring the trust all the way around. I'm going to go for Harlem Heat. Shut oh, up. Oh, nice. Really? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wheels. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. That was the one that everyone thought of. <laughs> no, I thought of the Hardy. <laughs> no, no, I, I thought of Brett Owen. You should listen to the uh, show sometimes. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. Everyone being like, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, no, no, I was going to say that. Go ahead, Will. Oh, so, so the black guy couldn't use Harlem Heat, right? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no that's not it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I broke my race now. Gee, wow. Calm down. No, no. Honestly, I please the whole Harlem Heat thing was. I enjoyed that tag team, but when they broke up, it was kind of the running joke of all of us over the years. Who's the Shawn Michaels and who's the Marty Jannetty? And <laughs> I, I always knew it was Booker T that was going to be the rising star. Mm-hmm. No pun well, intended. You, you didn't like. You, you didn't don't, like the slapjack. Don't, no riz, don't do it. You didn't don't like the slapjack. No, I, I was not impressed with that. Not a fan of Big T. No, no. Although Stevie Ray's induction speech of Booker T was 
one of the best induction speeches I've ever heard. You're not, you're not a big fan of straight shooting Stevie Ray? What? No. What? When was he that? <laughs> what What about their cousin, Big T? Oh. oh. Wasn't that Savio Vega? No, that was Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed Johnson. Johnson. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, River Plunge right there, buddy. Uh-huh. Yeah. Liver enzymes at all. What, what about their adopted cousin, Sweet T? Stop no, it. Oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh. oh yes, he was adopted <laughs> from Japan. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He was you? adopted from Japan by way of the Lipton Brewing Company. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wouldn't he be ginseng though? Oh. <laughs> Both of you. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Amen. What, wait, what is wait, your? Wait. Uh, what about their? What about their other Hall of Fame cousin? No, no. Okay, no. That's too far. <laughs> that's too far. You too far. Too far. Too far Bobby. We're he cutting it off. Mama. Sweet tea. <laughs> he loves his mama. Oh God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Please dig us out of this. My uh, second rival that I can think of <laughs> is the. Uh, I'm surprised this wasn't a go-to. Um, the classic rivalry between The Undertaker and Kane. Yeah. I think, oh, it, nice. I think, oh, I think that's sort of the the biggest synonymous like sibling rivalry feud. Uh, obviously having a lot of its ups and downs storyline-wise. Um, but I, I, I don't know. There's, there's, a, there's an intriguing aspect to that. I really do love, you know, some of the original sort of like maybe like the first like year of like 1998. Some of that stuff with Undertaker and Kane's really good, so... Mm-hmm. Especially the appearance when he ripped the cage door off. Yeah, first mm-hmm. That's gotta be Kane. And if they made an old lady at Buffalo Wild, Wing go, Wild Wings go, he's his brother. <laughs> One of my favorite moments ever. <laughs> Trevor from lady. Headlocks for Breakfast. Uh, what, what do, you, do you have a sibling rivalry you'd like to? Man, I, was, I was gonna say Kane and Undertaker, but <laughs> I'm trying to think of any more. Uh, I mean, I'm sure Rick and Scott like fought at some point, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. They they the yeah, that's right. I mean, it wasn't very memorable because I kind of remember it happening, but I kind of don't. Um, <laughs> obviously, Scott was the star. Yeah, he was our hookup. <laughs> Holla! <laughs> he hollered. He hollered when we heard him. And, yes. I mean, he did have that sweet chainmail, like you know. <laughs> I don't know the technical and he did make fun That's of off. Sid breaking his leg all the time. Mm. Yes. Great. I'm strong yes. enough to wear a Cleopatra hat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, jeez. Riz, what about you? You got one, any? Um, you know, they took most of the good ones. They uh, did. Uh, there's I was going to go. Big good one from WWE. I was going to go. Well, my third choice. <laughs> Because I had one, Harlem Heat was my first, and then, and then I had Undertaker Kane with the, the safety pick. Um, but all the really, really good ones were just taken by everybody. But the one I can think of, other than, you know, was the Dudley Boys. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, of. not 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 even the Dudley Boys. It's it was how they just manhandled Spike Dudley. Oh, okay. I see what you're going for. Yeah, you see what I did? Not not the Dudley Bond. Not, not not not. I was gonna say not excluding like TNA. Like like not they the never really have Devon because yeah, that just he, only brought us Batista. Well, Bubba Ray and Devon originally feuded in ECW before they became a tag team. Very true. Mm-hmm. Like remember they, they, when, they had, they remember had a big when Bubba Ray only stuttered. Plus, they were mean to Spike. My name is Boo. They bullied yeah, him. That. That's oh, where they had a bully Ray. No, no. So I'm surprised. Stop. I'm surprised nobody said this. I, I don't know if it was the best feud out of them, but Edge and Christian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah, a good feud, though. I mean, I I enjoyed it. Like it, it got it us, gave a, us like, yeah, the best theme song ever. <laughs> Best theme song. Mm-hmm. I wish I wish they had gotten a big blow off match. Yeah, they did. No, uh, but but the last match they had together was an unannounced thing on Raw. Like I wish they were able to get one before Edge had to retire. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like the blow. Well, I was gonna say the blow up to that feud was the No Mercy ladder match. But oh yeah, I'm I'm talking like when Christian came back from TNA. Like, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, that would yeah, I, I wish that I wish that had happened, but. So Edge guys, uh, if you have any that we missed, I'm not sure what uh, more we could do with that. Yeah, um, there's probably much more that we're not even thinking. Yeah, probably, mm-hmm. probably, especially if you get into some of that, like Georgia wrestling or something. WCW probably had a lot. Um, but anyways, uh, let us know on Twitter at Mayhem Show or on the Facebook or Google Plus uh, hashtag at Remember When, and uh, let us know or let us know in the email at Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com. So good 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 time. Kevin, Kevin, and Dave Sullivan. What? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that one was really good. Yeah, it was. I remember yeah, that. Yeah. Well, well, and Eric's fought and, each other. Anyways. It popped into my head when, when Sorg said about WCW. And they weren't technically siblings, but Eddie and Trava was always a good one. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. thinking that, too. They're like brothers. Anyways. Well, they're, they're like uncle and nephew. But it's they're close. <laughs> in, in, yeah. Close enough. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Clothe yourself in the stylings uh-huh. of the show. Um, go check it out oh, there. Oh, and Sorg. Yes? This week on Impact, you if you are an eagle-eyed watcher of TNA Impact, you might see a Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt. Is on that there. a property of Mayhem t-shirt, Mad Mike? That, that is a property and, of Mayhem t-shirt. And if you get a screen cap of that, you are allowed one chop of Mad Mike. No, you're allowed ten chops of Mad Mike. Vince Russo actually ten stole chops. it and he's sitting at ringside. <laughs> Damn it. We and go check out Property of Mayhem. Venom. Property of Mayhem as well as the uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. <laughs> great designs from the great Alex Cars and Alex Cars Designs. And, of course, the logo as well. You can also go check out even more AJ Styles, who was featured in that DVD we talked about earlier in the show. Uh, Cole Cabana, Diamond Dallas Page, some great indie guys like Joey Ryan, ACH. Uh, DJ Z is represented on here. Daphne, uh, go check it out. ProWrestlingTees.com. Crime Time's on here, guys. What? Yeah. They brothers? Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I don't. Are they uh, brothers? No, they're not. They're not brothers. No. Um, they actually <laughs> do have a T-shirt about the seven-year streak of JTG. Damn! Why did I pick up my phone? Seven-year streak. <laughs> it, 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 looks, it, it looks like a horrible. Shirt. So wait, does JTG shirt say six years? Seven. 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 Okay, okay. Because I was going to say, if his says six, he doesn't even know how long he was employed. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't. I, I love that he's even made it a joke of it. Uh, but go check it out. It supports the indie guys um, and, you know, supports things that are not the mainstream. You know, um, you know, it's important. Even some mainstreamish guys. Joey Styles is on here, guys. Oh, my God. He's making oh. that WWE money. Why Very he much. They yeah, still got to sell a T-shirt, right? Oh, my God. Yes. He's got a cat fight t shirt. And most of it's just oh my god, he's got cat the fight! What is this Wolfmobile? Oh what? No idea. Just so you know, Trent Beretta might ha- Trent Beretta and Chuck Taylor might have the two best shirts. Well they got one one was just or uh, Chuck Taylor is the a picture of a baby crying. <laughs> and it just says Chuck Taylor professional child scare. <laughs> And Trent Beretta is an outline of Trent Beretta and uh, Chuck Taylor as Mad Men. Nice. Or Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. The other one. Breaking okay. Bad. Breaking Bad. Wow. Um, I just saw the Chuck Taylor one. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, start off at wrestling. Uh, I'm sorry. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS. Riz, I know you had a very special week. Yeah, because <laughs> Kali was featured in a video with uh, Lillian Garcia and that other announcer chick, uh, Cody know, Rhodes' wife. Cody Rhodes. Styles. Yeah. This is Cody Rhodes. Ro- Even you Cody Rhodes. Styles. Is that Styles. it? Eden. Cody. Cody. Cody mm-hmm. Rhodes' wife. Eden's. A, Eden's at the wife. And on top of that, he sings. He sang. He, he sang. sang. He sang beautifully. By the way. By the way. <laughs> yeah. You know, for for a guy who didn't doesn't know English that really well for the past few years, the great Kali has been proved on his speaking. Well, he's a citizen now. Yeah, he's an American citizen. You respect America. America. Oh, there's respect. Jack Swagger's new tag team partner. Wouldn't that be great <laughs> if he started doing We the People? 
Little little people. Little people. You do wow. not. Who just? We all did. We all did. <laughs> yeah. We all did. I we thought did. I heard an Andre the Giant there for a minute. Yes, that's we are people. That's, <laughs> that's not. That's that's not. That's not the Great Cully. The Great You're right. Cully is a lot less legible. legible. I just want to hear the Great Cully say, "Does anybody want a peanut?" <laughs> 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 you know what? You know what? Somebody dared him to do that once. Just, and he probably doesn't know why they're saying that. Jeez. <laughs> oh, well, we uh, you know who's going to be in a new Princess Bride if they ever make it, remake it. Oh, actually, that'd be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. I'd buy that if they remake that. They're, they're rebooting everything, so why not? Yeah. yeah, Full House is coming back. For oh my god! Yeah. Everything can come back. Um, so, uh, so since you got more of you guys on, I think a, a few of you may have checked this out. But of course, the Monday Night Wars has premiered finally. Mike finally got to watch it's it. It's not a sneak peek anymore. It's not a sneak peek anymore. Um, not even getting into that. It's uh, <laughs> actually it actually pre- premieres on Tuesday night, so we're going to be a week be- behind. That, for I'm actually watching about this. it right now. You're watching it right now. Oh, well, I was watching... concentrating on the show, Riz. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're with first, us, sir. Now, now I'm watching this and. It's pretty much what you'd expect. Mm-hmm. Pretty much just a, great. you know, a DVD worth content stuff. It's um, it, it does feel a little bit like like they took the Monday Wars DVD and just stretched it out, right? Yeah, like they, there's more pretty much because they content. just showed Mick Foley and he looks like he's a, like a younger Mick Foley. Yeah. Yeah, doing they've been having these interviews no for sense. years. There's no sense in getting new interviews for them to tell the same stories. No, mm-hmm. no, and, and 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 they packed it into like an hour and a half uh, piece. So why not do, you know, use all that stuff on the cutting room floor they they have over the years? Because um, probably everybody they sat down with over the last like you know 15 years has been like mm-hmm. talking about that situation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Like, oh, go ahead. What's the mic? No, 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 no. You service. Sorry. There you go, Mike. All right, I'm excited to see if there's gonna be stuff from the Undertaker because mm-hmm. I know he he's recently done, like he sat down and did interviews for the Triple H thing, mm-hmm. for um the history of, for the history of WrestleMania for the 50 years. I'm interested to see what Taker has to say about the Monday Night Wars because that that like the DVD that I want more than anything from WWE is an Undertaker retrospective with him actually talking at, like out of character. And they've already recorded some stuff. If some of that's in Monday Night War, that would be great. Mm-hmm. I, I just want to... Well, even, even having Sting now is yeah. able to add I, more into it. I just want a DVD of Sting saying, I want to fight The Undertaker over and over again. <laughs> oh, you can fill an hour of that. <laughs> and it is, it, 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 there's a little bit more perspective. They, and there's also a lot more uh, Ted Turner in this, too. I, mm-hmm. I'm presuming these interviews are from like like uh, shareholder meetings or something. I wouldn't be surprised if it was like maybe PWI. You think? I think so. Because it seems like they got a lot of stuff from PWI, like mm-hmm. magazine clips and things like that. Like uh, the Heyman DVD was full of stuff from PWI. They actually have one of the writers from PWI in this yeah. last episode. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they had access to like well, some it, and isn't he writing on the site now? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh after. Oh. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah after so. after does some columns for them. Mm-hmm. Really? Huh. Is that recent uh, just, development? Just so you know, the Monday Night War thing was over, and I was just watching a pre uh, the countdown of best tag teams. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know what's going <laughs> yeah, on. I just heard Road Dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, I got stuck last night, guys. After we're done with the wrap up, I had the uh, backstage pass on just because, just to kind of jog my mind as we're doing the wrap up. Um, and there was a, an Undertaker Kurt Angle SmackDown match that I could what? not take my eyes off of. Wow! And that's all they showed for like a half an hour. <laughs> just the one. Yes. Match. Sometimes they'll just do that. Like if they need, like if something's going to end early, yeah, they'll just put in a match that roughly fills the time. Well, notice that they do have a lot more kind of vault pieces. Like when they did, they were starting to do the like, hey, we're going to show John Cena versus Brock from Extreme Rules that one time after Raw tonight. Or here's Brock versus CM Punk from last year at SummerSlam just by itself. Because it does get a little daunting. So, oh, I want to see that match. 
you pull it up and you have to find it in the pay-per-view, right? Um, mm -hmm. They're not right. really set up very well for that. But when they want to push you to something like that, somebody that wants to dive in and say, oh, these guys fought before, how was that? You know, that they want to showcase. I think that's that's a great thing for them to do. Um, but it's creating this kind of extra vaulty place. I don't know how how you the guys vault. are watching it. It's the, it's the vault. Yeah, it's but that's great, like not under any world. other umbrella versus, I don't know. And I feel like that's going to get cluttered at some point. So I'm, I'm sure though. Matt, Matt, uh, go ahead, Riz, what were you going to say? No, no, I'm interrupting everybody. Oh, okay. Um, well, Matt McCarthy said on, uh, he, he, he suggested that they should take, they should call the, the 12 o'clock a.m. to like 6 a.m. spot, like the hole, and just put all those inner settle things in a row. Oh. Like, like just different segments from different shows, mm -hmm. like Piper's Pit, stuff like that, and just put it there and just, put that all that string all that out because like only the insomniacs will be up like watching that at that time anyways mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it'll be kind of like cool to see all that old stuff like put on the on the network like that at you know a given time well i think they use the um like the late night hours to put out some of the old shows that they have because yeah. they have yeah. they have so much content and the way that mm -hmm. they've set it up is it has to like air live before it can be on demand mm -hmm. yeah so i think they just have the running stream of those older shows. The only they difference, have literally thousands and thousands of shows that they can put in at that time. Really, the only difference is what they're doing with the, um, like the, apparently the Nitros and the Raws coming up, and uh, what they did on Saturday Night's Main Event, Clash of Champions, where they just dump the entire thing out. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Nitro, I know they're doing the first hundred hours or whatever. Thousand hours or thousand hours, excuse me. Um, so I'm assuming it's like. But they did that. No, I think it's a hundred hours. Uh, yeah, because we no, had those like thousand. fifty episodes. They said thousand. from ninety-five to ninety-seven. It's a thousand hours. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense uh, because I, they they didn't do Saturday Night's Main Event uh, entirely. They did up through like the end of eighty-seven, I think, like eighty-five to eighty-seven, um, and then they just like opened up the rest of it. What, the whole time they're advertising, you know, hey, watch all of the Saturday Night's Main Event the entire time. The mm -hmm. not all of it was available um so i wonder there there's some there's some mixed messages like did anybody catch michael cole saying that we can trade cards on on a yeah. WWE super yeah. card yeah. And, yeah. And, uh, and face each other man. it's like come Not on yeah anyways you can't even play your friends no <laughs> not like on purpose he was a war correspondent <laughs> and you can't even get an <laughs> iphone app right jeez 999 michael cole what the hell the hell michael cole michael cole just says what they tell him to say he doesn't he doesn't know about it. he's not playing super card come on come on he's got that <laughs> ipad in front of him all night why not i just want jbl to look at him and just go you can't trade cards maggle <laughs> you know what I, I was just looking at the network and i think the reason that they have released nitro now is because the last raw that they have from the ones that they're doing like in order mm -hmm. is august 7th 1995 mm -hmm. And that is roughly when Nitro debuted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's. I thought that's what they were doing in the first place because they started raw from the beginning and they were releasing a few episodes each week and going and going. I figured once it got to where Nitro debuted, then they'd add Nitro. You know, and I'm also so, noticing. So I'm we not... probably won't see more SmackDowns until they get up to 1999 mm -hmm. and Raw. Yeah. And, and then been... Thunder will be on. <laughs> oh man! Oh no! Thunder is so bad. Are we going to have a Thursday Night War special? Maybe. No, that's a bad no, idea. No, <laughs> no. Like, yeah, then we did this thing. Eh, it, it didn't work <laughs> as well. Um, I don't remember a single important thing that ever happened on Thunder. I remember the video game. His, I remember, <laughs> didn't like yeah. Ric Flair go out to the desert one time and <laughs> like, like I'm, really I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the biggest thing that ever happened on Thunder was them reneging on that Starcade 97 match and okay. having Sting relinquished the title. What? Real? What? Yeah, like because of the whole like all oh, the fast count bullshit or whatever. Like, is that the Bret Hart fast count? Yeah. So, it's, oh, yeah. man, was I peeved? Man, was I peeved? <laughs> oh, I, I, I <laughs> oh, I'm so it. pissed Thor, off. Thor, tell us I, about it. That was the beginning of the end for WCW for me. Because mm -hmm. it was such a great. Um, you guys will get into Money Network. Uh, I still don't know how they screwed up Bret Hart that badly. Coming off of the screw job. 
Because like, they kind of just yeah. doled him out as the thing. Like, they didn't really but, have a story for him. They're just like, Brett's going to be here, and he's going to do stuff. So Especially that's like the easiest layup that WCW was ever given. I'll tell you mm-hmm. why. I'll tell you why. Uh, Hulk Hogan, creative control. Oh, yeah. 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 Especially when they involved him with that match. Mm-hmm. Creative By control. the way, best sibling rivalry, anyone Hulk Hogan called brother. Very you hard. know, I was going to say the Mega Power is exploding because they called each other brother, brother, and I watched that today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. We have lustful eyes for Elizabeth. Yeah. Uh, lustful eyes for Elizabeth. CM Punk's right. CM Punk's right on that one. Hogan was the heel. By the way, Hogan. Oh, yeah. That's Sorg. Right. Sorg. Hogan hasn't been a face since he beat the Sheik. <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> Um, hey, I noticed something. You were talking about how they were showing all the old, old shows overnight. Um, that's not happening now. I'm looking at really? this week. It's all Best of Raw, War, Monday Night War replays, Hall of Best of Hall of Fame replays, uh, WrestleMania Rewind, Beyond the Ring at 6 a.m. Um, like, oh. And it's mostly that kind of lineup. Total Divas replays, Superstars uh, main event. Oh, okay. Because I know they're showing like a lot they, of world class. It used to and... be. Uh, it used to be for the longest time, right? It was world class, uh, hardcore TV. Um, let me see if they do that on the weekends. Uh, and the, um, the uh, hardcore show. TV. That's probably the worst oh, thing. Oh, it's rough. Right now. It, that, that, no. No. no, Riz. The only reason it's the worst thing is because they're only in like '93. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. It, you know, it, the, the, the actual when it gets to the East, actual yeah. ECW, it's not bad, but you know. I still but, want I, my wish for the network is for them to eventually put Texas wrestling from the fifties oh, on there. W R A S S L I N wrestling. No, wrestling. Riz, Riz, that song pre like is ahead of what I'm talking about. Uh, this was this is black and white. Like <laughs> I saw Vern Gagne do a power bomb, hmm. and it was because he botched someone trying to lift him up and he lost his footing. <laughs> <laughs> he accidentally like spiked them like a jackknife power bomb. So he accidentally <clears throat> invented the power bomb that night. Yeah. yeah. What I want, I want bad matches for an hour on a WWE network. <laughs> Wait for thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I just want like randomly bad matches over and over again. This just in: WWE buys Botchamania Library. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's just get, get like a, by CZW. <laughs> find like the cheap seats. Like, all, all the episodes they did with bad wrestling in it, and just watch that and just put it on there. Well, Riz, you can always watch NXT season three on Hulu. Oh, uh. <laughs> is this still up there? Yeah. Oh man. I mean, yeah, all their stuff's still on Hulu. Is still up there. Oh yeah. man, why? Why would you do that to anybody? Because <laughs> they have cool. Well, no, all the NXT stuff, like up to when the network logs, is still up on Hulu. Well, it's still even even recent stuff. They're still doing episodes on there. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know about. I haven't checked, but I don't know about recent stuff. I know, like up to where, like they debuted on the network. Everything before that is on Hulu, and it's not on the network. The only the only skeptical stuff is the um, like the takedowns and the you know that kind of stuff. So I think they had some kind of weird specials they ran that week. Um, yeah, this one's Thursday, August 21st. Yeah, they're still running new ones. Hmm. Now, you get them like the next day, I think. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, I'm sure they don't have them live or anything. But... No, 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 no. Well, well, they're not live to begin with. I, we're, you're just getting it first when you get it. It probably debuts. They said they're going to start airing them at like 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, what's that about? Yeah, their first run. Yeah. I guess maybe just to get them on there so people watch them faster. You can watch them on demand. And probably yeah. to, probably yeah. to alleviate any streaming issues. That yeah, works for me because I can watch them at 8 o'clock. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I, no, you know why they're probably doing it three hours earlier? Or four hours earlier? Because they're international now. Oh. oh. oh be, yeah. But don't they, they normally post, like, I think usually you can watch episodes of NXT that day. Well, you know, and, uh, the other thing is, that's probably why they're doing the replays overnight the way they are, too. Yeah, yeah actually, that, that's a really good point. I didn't, yeah. Yeah. So, you're international I mean, now, so you have to so, have... So everybody's getting the same feed. The like, there's no separate programming, you think? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think so. Do we have 
Wait, yeah, I the only, so. okay, we got a friend in, 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 in London, but he's not getting it until October. <laughs> and it's um, the same I language. know someone in Australia who I think is getting it. So well, I They have it in Russia. Him. I know somebody in Russia. I don't know if he's a wrestling fan, though. I, I, you Did know what? I, Vladimir Kozlov? No, it's not. Oh. No. No, it's a guy it I went to the Art Institute with, actually. <laughs> So. Oh, I was hoping some, for some more tea time with Vladimir and William Regal. Oh yes. Uh, where yes. where is Oksana? Um, she uh, got, got fired like months ago. ago. No, um, I know. I mean, where is she? I can't find her anywhere. Wait, what are you me? looking for? Are you stalking her? It's Bobby. She is with Dean Ambrose. That's Bobby. <laughs> you what? know you can't be like hundred yards of Oksana. <laughs> Yes, Please. I can. That's 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 yeah. court ordered. Mm, yes, good. she has to knit me a sweater. <laughs> that's that's why you have that order, Bobby. Bobby, just because she said knit mm. knit doesn't mean she knows how to knit. That means no. <laughs> that means no, Bobby. That's not, she's Lithuanian. That's yeah. Yeah, she doesn't say knit. Yeah, that's that's not that's not accurate. No. Oh, I will that's not stand not. for this inaccuracy. I have, I have a, 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 I have a that's great uncle that speaks Lithuanian. That's not right at all. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I don't want, I don't want Sorbs relatives no. offended. That's, no, that ain't no. Cool. How can I be on this show as a guest if if things are not accurate? This is no. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the Wikipedia podcast. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. where we self-edit ourselves. We have the Wiki Kid, Eamon Payton here. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I never normally never. Holy wrong. crap! She has a very Lithuanian name. I never knew Aksana's real name, and I yeah, still can't pronounce it. Yeah, it's got a bunch it. of Z's in it, isn't it? There's a there's wait, a wait, lot wait, of wait, wait, wait. Hold, 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 <laughs> what? It's got wow. a bunch of Z's. It does. It does. <laughs> I have two Z's I in my nickname. Show title. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have so many doofickies above your what? Z's. Is it a bunch of Z's in it? Is it like Seville something like? Uh, my exactly. guess is Seville Rodinio Ni Rod Rod Rodinio. Rod, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna email my uncle. Her name is Aziz and sorry. Yes, Aziz and sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Her name is. knows Kanye West. That's awesome. <laughs> and she has a cousin Randy. <laughs> she has a filmography and a web series. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, JBL and Cole. Like, no, 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 no. I heard August and I got excited. It's there, uh, right. it's it's JBL and Cole's show. <laughs> Goes that's, to Google. That's not. That doesn't count. <laughs> Bobby's got a new binge watch. <laughs> <laughs> I like Riz's answer. He's like, I heard Ography, and I got excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the Google or the uh, YouTube library for for myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh wow is there hey, anything Sork. else what Sork. fans fans see this is what happens when you don't send us emails <laughs> oh, God. Is, is it, it's just me like i feel like it was like this on the tech show too it was a bad week for news or anything interesting to talk about right Sork, there, there is some yeah news. is there news tna got picked up for the year that's not oh, news yeah. Well, no, we were talking about it last for the week, year. They, they got, got the picked. Bump. They got picked up for an extra three weeks or three months. No, they got picked up for the rest of the year. Yeah. That's that's three months news. because they're supposed uh, to be done in October. Yes, but that's better news than anything. They they won't be gone just yet. So mm. instead of the electric chair, they got a lethal injection. What? No, no, a lethal injection is faster. <laughs> wheels, guys, I got. Oh. I got some good news from the SmackDown tapings. It's not a spoiler because it happened in a dark match. Uh oh. Okay. The team of Big E and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods in their corner defeated Heath Slater and Titus O'Neil. Yeah. Why, why is that a good thing? Oh, because they're together. back. Because they're but, together. But Slater Gator. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it was a dark match. Well, let's so it really be honest. Count, but they're getting back. They're back together. The stable Slater with- Gator is not meant to win matches. No. I. They are in my heart. But they worked I as baby faces. Sure. <laughs> they worked as baby faces, though, which is kind of weird. Interesting. Interesting. Right. Because oh, why, Bobby? also, why is, uh, why is that weird? Because well, they were acting heelish when they. Were- what did the, the militant the black militant black ass the can't be faces? What's wrong evil. with you, Bobby? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not even the one that brought that up. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to beat you to the punch. So, so going back to what uh, 
Matt and Mike was saying, there is more TNA news. Okay. Uh oh. Um, even though they did get the, the the rest of the year to figure out their shit, mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, if it falls through, the the leading like network. <laughs> I heard about this. Oh, no. Is called the Velocity Network. Oh no! I have that. I don't know if I do. It's, it, it, and it's not what you think, sort of. It's cars. It, it, it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. Isn't it all car that's, stuff? That's a yeah. global force wrestling doesn't get there first. Yeah. Um, so, so wait a minute. Wait, wait. It, it's NASCAR Channel. No, no. It's just, no. It, it, no. It's like hot rods and overhauled is on this. What channel. What the hell yeah. are they gonna? What? Nobody. What? They said it's only in certain packages, and it only comes in HD. Every match is a parking lot brawl. <laughs> and it's, it's so we can staircase the If you thought the crossovers with MMA hands and TNA were fan. bad now, wait till yeah. wait till they uh, they have to advertise such great shows as Wheeler Dealers and Car Crazy or Overhaulin. Or Overhauling. what's in the barn immediately after Impact Wrestling on Thursday nights? And, and Overhauling some... is the best show on that yeah. network. Perhaps, no, actually, perhaps the crossover with "What's My Car Worth" would be very interesting. <laughs> Sorg, Sorg. Actually, after after uh, Impact, cops it airs anyways. <laughs> cops followed yeah. it over. And, and um, at this point, aren't it's they cops? Be available in forty-eight million homes across the United States. Mine's one of them. What's what's Spike <laughs> available in? Probably more. Oh, Spike <laughs> is available in a lot more. Like Spike, Spike's basic cable at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. this is like third tier, probably. Yeah, that's this gonna is, help. That's like, gonna help people fill those ball fields. It's like, did you have Ion Network for no. main event? I, d- I had. Well, I do, but it's over the air here. Yeah. yeah. So that people bumps up to, the numbers big people time. Have, people have to have their John Taffer. Shut it down. <laughs> By the Spike. way, Shut I uh, down, Bobby. I asked Shut somebody. I, I did ask somebody Shut that. Down. <laughs> I, I did ask somebody that I knew was running a baseball field show the other side of Cleveland. How 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 the show went? They're like, yeah, it drew pretty good. Uh, out drew TNA. It's like, wow. I love that. That's a bar <laughs> that like indies use. Like <laughs> just just in conversation. <laughs> WWE super card out drew TNA. I think it did. I, I think it did. Uh, more of us played super card than watched TNA last week. Mm. Fact. Yep. So, we played Supercard during Raw as well. <laughs> that, that's true, but we were still watching Raw. I played Raw. Supercard during Awesome Cast. Well, hey. Well, hey. Hmm. But I watched it, too. Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's okay. Um, guys, on that point, let's uh, <laughs> shit. Let's roll out of here. We got the Indie Mayhem Show. Amos got a great guest lined up here. What'd you learn from wrestling this week, Bobby? I learned that uh, Damian Sandow is a great substitute for The Miz. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. That's what I learned. Yes. Awesome. Mike, what about you? I learned that I want to see Luke Carper in an Office Depot match. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he hates those shares. Look, look, look at the GIF on the uh, Mayhem Show Facebook page to understand. Or, you know, watch SmackDown. One or the other. He hit. <laughs> Why would you do that? Who did he throw the chair at? Because he hit him with every part of the chair somehow. It, it literally, like, I don't. I would love to see it in slow motion because it looked like Cody tried to hit every part of the chair, even the wheel. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, Riz, what about you? Uh, come back to me, Sorg. I have a oh, lot. Oh, no. What about you, Trevor? <laughs> Is that me now? Yeah, it's you. It? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I learned I'm about two weeks too late in getting stock and cinder blocks. <laughs> also true uh wheels what'd you learn from wrestling this week it kind of goes with trevor's uh <laughs> i've learned that jerry the king lawler almost died getting hit with a cinder block <laughs> because no he wouldn't have no 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 that did cinder block is loaded did you see jerry lawler hold up that cinder block with one hand i could hold up that piece with one hand that wasn't going to kill him. The, it might have been the, the diet to mountain, the hospital. The diet Mountain Dew that they're forced to drink is going to kill him. 
<laughs> the cocktail of Mountain Dew and the it's Hardys not, are gonna just Sonic. Make start what's, ri- what's written on the King's gravestone will just be "Love puppies and Mountain Dew." Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's Dew. the only one Diet. drinking it too. Billy Diet was doing it. Uh, yeah. Amen. What did you learn for this week? I learned also about Jerry Lawler this week is that he <laughs> loves families for some reason. <laughs> no, no. He, see, Eamon, this is what you're not getting. He just loves female twins. Apparently. Uh, yeah, when's the last time you called Brian Christopher? Huh, Jerry? Huh? When's the last time you, you rang him up on the phone? Wow. How about that? Oh, geez. How about that? Talk to your son. I love that WWE, like, wasn't not too long ago where, like, WWE did the whole, like, Parenting videos like with Roman Reigns and Del Rio and all that. Uh, they, they already pulled Del Rio's. <laughs> well, <laughs> but man, that does not exist anymore. But hey, Jerry Lawler, talk to your son, please. Man, wow, um, wow. Uh, Riz, did you come up with something? I did, and it kind of ties in with Jerry Lawler again. Hmm. Um, I learned. <laughs> That he thinks a family intervention is boob grabbing. Yep, yeah. I saw that too. Yeah, like during the separation part of the uh, the gathering of the t- Bella twins. Uh, you almost said gathering of the jugglers, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> of the just like magnets. Gathering um, of the jugglers. Oh. Also. But, <laughs> You can actually see him in slow motion just cup Nikki's boobs. Well, yeah. And that's why he really and got if you, slapped. And if, you ask, and if you ask me, would you? The answer is no. See, the funny thing is, Nikki's still too old for him. Oh, jeez. Oh. <laughs> are, are we also forgetting that, that Roman Reigns no-sold gravity this week? Yes. <laughs> No, Kalisto no sold gravity. Oh, yeah. That's true, yeah. too. That was true, too. <laughs> Kalisto said a big fuck you to gravity. <laughs> wow. It's like he kicked George Clooney and Sandra Bullock in the dick. <laughs> Wait. What? Sandra Bullock doesn't have a dick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad accuracy. Sorry. Accuracy on this show. Trying to be accurate. <laughs> uh, so uh, I learned, uh, did you guys know that friend of the show, Jimmy DeMarco, is celebrating a birthday today? Whoa, oh my god! Oh, wow. I do remember one on Jimmy DeMarco, Sorg. We, because That's it's the, the wrong, wrong show. show. That's show. for the Jake other Sorg. show. For Sorg, you guys here live. It originated on this show. It originated, but that, that applies there. That applies there. Sorg, Sorg, Sorg um, did you think, get him think... a, an eight pack of D batteries for his birthday? <laughs> He sends a tweet earlier today saying that that uh, that he and I are going to be down at the Sheridan Station Square signing autographs. <laughs> hey, Thor, Thor, you are forgetting his title now. You what? name, you say his title. Yes, say it right. He is minority, he is owner, minority owner of the IWC. Of the IWC. He is at IWC Promoter on the Twitters. I was wondering who this mysterious account was that followed me a few weeks ago and was retweeting half of the stuff I was saying about IWC. Um, well, there you go. It was him the whole time. The it was me all the time. Was me and his... I'm gonna be... It was me the whole time. Sorg, I don't know if I'm supposed to be scared, <laughs> thrilled, turned on. I don't know. <laughs> I'm all of the above. I am all three right now. For what, what's com- what's to come for IWC? Ah, uh, you said come. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we have the explicit oh, tag. Okay, like, guys, ladies and gentlemen, if nothing thing, else, whoa, 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 where'd he go? Where'd he whoa. go? Where'd whoa. he go? What the hell just happened? He walked away. Whoa! Holy crap! Um, um I, all right, I let me see if I can do this, was... guys. Trevor, Trevor Oz. Oh, his last here. name ever. He's at Trevor Oz. It's O S Z uh, on the Twitters. Headlocks for breakfast.com. Anything cool coming up you want to plug real quick? Uh, uh, actually, uh, maybe not for Headlocks for Breakfast, but if you are a wrestling fan in the area, uh, coming up in Newell, West Virginia, Black Diamond Wrestling will be there Great. this Friday. Uh, so come check that out. I actually do commentary for them. So cool. Nice. Nice. Yeah, go check them out. We have a lot of friends uh, as a part of Black Diamond. Jake Garrett's a part of that that we've had on the show in the and past. Can't, can't make it to the area. Uh, Trevor will tell you. 
Watch it on uh, Ustream, correct, Trevor? Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting um, they're on Ustream. Now it's actually on YouTube. Oh, okay. Oh. I stream on YouTube now. So um, the full nice. show is available right after it right after it airs live. So Cool, cool. Yeah, and I, and I enjoy watching it live. So if you don't make it down there, watch it. It's great. Listen. Yeah, and I hear their commentary is great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that one guy. He's, he's really awesome. <laughs> awesome. Go check out Black Diamond Wrestling uh, and HeadlocksForBreakfast.com. Hey, big thanks to, uh, of course, Basic Sickness for the intro, outro, BasicSickness.com. Thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters that's been doing our tweets and our show notes all night long. Says, intern war. He's got he's got three podcasts he does it for us every week. So it was big thanks to him. I coffee with him last week. Good dude. Now I'm only on one podcast. <laughs> yes, you are, Riz. That's that's because of your jobby job. You want to check us out? More stuff at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Please subscribe to the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed if you want to catch everything that we're doing on iTunes and Stitcher, and also the Sogertron Media Everything feed that has absolutely everything, including my daily morning podcast, where I just talk about whatever the hell I want to. I talked about wrestling this morning, actually. Uh, so you might want to catch that. Some of my thoughts on IWC over this past Talk weekend. about turkey, Sorg. And, and Sorg Maybe tomorrow Sorg, we'll talk about super turkey. Feed. Sorg, that super feed is only none, nundy, none. None, nundy, none. Free. It's exactly. free. Exactly. Go follow at Mad Mike four eight eight three at Hot Wheels R W A at Bobby F J Town at Amon two please. At Sorg. Hot Wheels R W A Riz and I'm at Sorgatron Mayhem out.